All right, so yesterday on Twitter, Christian Cardozo asked me how I'm liking my new iPad Pro. And he also asked if you can annotate PDFs on it. Um, so the answer is I, I like the iPad Pro a lot. And yes, you can annotate with the Apple Pencil. So I'm going to show you the three apps that I have at my disposal and run through some of the features or lack thereof. I'm going to try to do this in under 10 minutes. Um, so bear with me if I'm talking fast. So first things first, we'll open up Adobe. Now, right now I have it in landscape mode just for the sake of this video, but generally I would have it in portrait mode. Um, but you can see I have the toolbar up here at the top. Um, so that's the toolbar. Generally though, that's not there when you first open it up. You have to go to the menu here. You have to go to comments. You can close off that sidebar and then it, it pops up up here. Um, so let's get rid of those. Now, pen tool uh, works pretty well. You could adjust the thickness. One thing I'm not crazy about is that, you know, once I've written something, it, unless I exit out of that tool, any adjustment I make, it is made to what I just wrote. So, for example, I would have to go to the highlighter and then back to the pen, change the color, change the thickness, and now I can go back to writing. Um, the writing itself is fairly smooth. No real complaints there. Um, the highlighter, I'm trying to highlight the title right now, and you're seeing nothing happening. That's because you have to put quite a bit of force into it. Um, and the amount of pressure, it's, I mean, it's really kind of a pain in the butt. I don't want to be pressing that hard just to highlight something. Same thing if I want to do strike through or underline, you know, you have to do a pretty significant amount of pressure to make that happen. Uh, the highlighting looks great. The underlining, the strike through, that all looks great. It looks like if you would have done it in Adobe on your computer with your mouse. No complaints about the looks, but it's just the actual process of it is a pain in the butt. Um, there's a text thing. I wouldn't be typing text in this type of scenario using the Apple Pencil. Um, scrolling, if I go to scroll with one finger, it just ends up using the pen tool to, to write. That's annoying. I have to do a two-finger scroll, um, which I don't always think to do when I'm using this. Highlighting, I could only highlight the printed text in the PDF. Um, I cannot highlight my handwriting. So again, that's that's a bit of an annoyance. Um, you can scroll with the Apple Pencil though, um, depending on what you have selected. So the highlighter, I could scroll. The pen tool, I cannot. I just end up writing. Um, all in all, not thrilled with this. I won't be using it to annotate PDFs, but it is a free option. If you do the paid upgrade, I don't, I don't know what extra features would be included, but that's that. Then we have the, the built-in, I guess, preview app. This is similar to preview on Mac OS. Um, same article. This one, you can see the pen tool. Very nice. This also writes smooth. Um, no complaints. The highlighter, much improved. No force at all. This looks much more natural. Um, you can even see some spots are darker than others. It's because the more pressure you apply, the darker it's going to be. Uh, you could keep scribbling over and over and make it dark to the point where you can't even see the word. Uh, this is like a crayon or colored pencil tool. This one is pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that the the bar down here, it's there right from when you open it. Um, if you wanted to, you can make it disappear by hitting that. What else do they have? This is a cut and paste. So if I want to move that arrow over here, I could do that. Um, if I want to move this arrow over here, I can do that. If I want to copy it, I can copy. Then you could paste it here if i want to duplicate it i can duplicate it there um this has shapes oh that was text we don't want text
But if I want to do a square, now the square I have to resize with my finger. It doesn't do it with the Apple Pencil for whatever reason. But it has that. You can change the color on it. Uh, if I want to add a circle, you know, you can add a circle. Move it around again, change the color. That's fine. Um, let's say I wanted to write something here. So the question is, can a Latin Trinity be social? I would say no. I could go to my highlighter. I can highlight text that I've written. I cannot do that in Adobe. What else? There's a ruler tool. I wouldn't use that. Um, if I don't want to draw my arrows, I could use their arrow tool. Uh-oh. I don't want to do that. Change the color. So, again, you know, for, for a free app that's built in, this one is great. No real complaints. Except, uh, same thing, single finger scrolling with one finger it just ends up writing. I have to do the double finger thing again. Um, can't scroll with the pencil. But, I, you know, if you can get used to that, you can get used to it. I'm not always thinking in that direction. And then there's Good Notes 5. This one I paid for. You can see the interface is kind of like Microsoft Word a little bit. Um, grab my pen tool. There's different pen options. You have fountain pen, ball pen, brush pen. And, you know, the writing is smooth. Circle, underline, cross out. You can bracket stuff off. Whatever you need to do. You can change the color easily. You'll see here there's three main colors um, that you could go between. And these could all be changed to whatever you want. So those are super helpful. You can change the thickness easily. You know, there's nothing um, nothing really crazy about that. The highlighter is kind of a cross between the two. So I'm not really applying any pressure. But you'll see it kind of straightens my lines out. So the finished product looks more like Adobe than it does the preview. But at the same time, um, you know, the amount of pressure I'm putting is nothing. And you can do crooked. I can highlight things that I've handwritten. I can highlight in the margins. Um, this has the cut and paste feature. Not anything this touches. So you'll see it's touched just a little bit of the red squiggle there. Um, that will move with this. Which is not a big deal. You just have to be careful in how you do it. If I tap on there, I could resize it. Let's say I want to move that. You could reorient it. So that's helpful at times. Um, there are shapes. I have my shape set to fill color. So let's say I want to just highlight this. I draw my shape. That I was trying to draw a rectangle. It was very sloppy, so it made it a circle. But you see, if I do draw a square of some sort, you know, it'll do it like that. It fills in the color. Um, you can swap, swap it out, swap colors. And, you know, it kind of takes your sloppy handwriting and neatens it up. That one made another circle. If you don't want to use your own circles. Uh, what else? These, you can insert a photo if you needed to. I hit it twice. The photos can be resized. And rotated. You know, no real reason to do that. Um... Yeah, th this one, the features are far and away better than the rest. Let's see, the eraser. This only erases portions of what you've done, so it doesn't take the entire stroke out of the way. So if ever there was a scenario where I just want to get rid of, say, some of this underlining but leave the highlighting, you know, you'd be fine. And, yeah, that's, that's that for that. But let's say I just absolutely hate every annotation I've made. Um, and want to start from scratch if I go to the menu here All I have to do is hit clear page and it brings you back to a blank slate and You know, you could start all over again. So Yeah, for my money um, Absolutely no question Good notes 5 is the clear winner uh, But you shouldn't be surprised with that. This is the one you paid for so, you know, the saying is true. You get what you pay for 
the free ones if you're going to go with a free one i would just go with the standard preview one i have the file in my files so this is the default one that it opens to um acrobat i don't really care for it i wouldn't recommend it but if that's your thing and you're used to using adobe i say go for it but if you want to splurge and spend the seven or eight bucks it costs for good notes five um you know this one to me is the clear clear winner and gets my highest recommendation i'm going to try out notability one of these days but you know so far i've gotten the hang of this pretty quick and i really like the features that it has with it so i'm, I'm going with good notes for the win